Hi, this is Esther Loopstra. I'm a designer and illustrator, and I'm working on the second part of my pattern demo using Adobe Illustrator CC. And in my previous um, demo, I used Adobe Capture CC, which is an app on your phone. So you can see here, I've brought the pattern that I captured with the app into Illustrator. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to adjust, take a little bit of time and adjust some of the elements in my pattern and make them a little bit more appealing. I'm just using um, the direct select tool and my handles and also I like to use the blob tool and the eraser tool sometimes. So those are what I'm using and I'm just kind of straightening out, um, working on editing and making the lines a little bit thicker and thinner in some places, a little bit of variance in the line and rounding out some of the curves that are in these shapes to make them a little bit more appealing. I have cleaned up my um, pattern and edited it a little bit and I want to go ahead and start coloring my objects and I'm going to go to the same place that I went before. You can see that my, in my library, my um, shapes are in, in there and I have some color pa um, palettes that I want to use and if I click on this color palette and just right click, I can add this to my swatches. Now, if I go to my swatches, I can see that that color palette that I got from Cooler is on there. <clears throat> and that's what I'm gonna use to color my pattern. I'm also gonna use a, uh, the live paint bucket that Adobe has, uh, which makes it super easy to color uh, objects. So I just want to select the object first and then I'm going to select the live paint bucket um, and I want to click on the color that I wanted to make it. Now notice that um, after I clicked on the live paint bucket and then I clicked on that color, it didn't color automatically that object. It's showing me now um, a little bit of my color palette and the color that I want to color that object with. So now when I hover over this object it says click to make live paint group. So when I click on this it's going to color my object. It's also going to make it a live paint group which will divide it up into sections which I can paint. So you can see when I hover over it's going to ask me if I want to, you know, it's kind of like this is the area that you're going to want to color in. So if I use my arrow keys, I can scroll through my colors here and see what color I would like to color that in with. And I'm going to choose this sort of cream color. And I'm just going to go through all of these objects in that way. Uh, so if I have this group, I want to make sure I'm selecting the entire group here. Make sure I'm clicking on that live paint bucket first. And I'm just going to make all these outlines uh, green. And you can see I can color in each one of those. So you can see that it was really easy that just to color, oops, I missed some here, just to color in uh, all of these objects using the live paint tool. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make this a pattern and I'm gonna drag and select my entire group here. And I'm actually gonna drag it off the side here. I still have it selected. I'm gonna go to object, pattern make. And this little notice pops up saying that a new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. Okay, so the only way that I can edit this pattern is through 
your swatches panel because you can see here that this new pattern, this is the pattern that you actually just created. And um, so the only way that you can edit it, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually just close this right now so you can see this pattern that I created. I'm going to edit it and click done. But I like to work on a blank, a white space or a blank space. Um, and it's just to be able to see the whole pattern. So I'm going to double click on that pattern and you can see I can get into that again. So it's sometimes kind of confusing because you have to go back into the pattern in order to work on it. Um, so here I have all of my shapes that I've brought in and colored and you can see what the pattern is going to look like here. This is the repeatable pattern so that means I can repeat it on all, uh, copy it on all sides and it'll turn and it'll make this pattern that just um, repeats very nicely. And so we have these pattern options here, this panel that comes up and I can name my pattern and it has tile type so if, if you could see um, this is just on a grid right now so there uh, all the patterns are right next to each other not moving down or up. I can do brick by row which moves the row over brick by column so you have all these different options. Hexagon, this makes a hexagon. I think I'm gonna do brick by column. And what that does by not just doing the simple row is that it switches it up a little bit so that you can not as easily see the repeat. So when I, um, can, if you can see, uh, I can see this shape, it's repeating right in a row. But when I move it, it has an offset, so it um, moves that shape up, just one offset. <clears throat> and you can, you can um, also adjust the offset, so this is half, and, uh, half and this is a fourth, so you can see it moves it a little bit differently, a third, two thirds, so that's kind of nice. Let's play with that. And um, I like to use this, this this will help you to adjust if you click on this little button uh, the pattern tile tool you can adjust your frame so or tile <laughs> so that possibly your shapes will come in to the frame and uh, it'll cause a little bit of um, closeness and overlapping so that you can just adjust that. Almost anything you want to do with your shapes, like change the color, move them around, um, you can do in this pattern uh, window. So it's a little bit tricky sometimes because like say I want to move this object, I have to figure out where it is. It's right here. Uh, so I, I just am basically adjusting my pattern so that it's um, really an, a more interesting design. And I've grouped these objects so they're easy to move. And I'm just going to play around with what goes where. I'm not sure if I like that because it's right next to each other. There's two little leaves right next to each other. So I'm going to move this. So you want really a nice balance of shapes and small and large, maybe small and large shapes, a nice flow of the colors. And once you're done, and I just click on click this done button up here at the top, and you can see that it's gone away, right? Um, it's still in my swatches panel. So what I like to do is just grab a shape rectangle and you can see that my pattern is here in my swatches and now I can see what it's going to look like and notice it doesn't have so this is a totally repeatable pattern it doesn't have a background to it uh, I'm going to add a background 
by adding a layer. So I just clicked create new layer and I'm going to turn off this top layer. I'm going to create, I'm going to, I'm going to choose one of the colors, the color I didn't use in my pattern and see how that looks on top of it. And then you can keep this or you could just delete it because all these shapes are already in my pattern. And that's it. That's how you create a repeatable pattern and bring in images from your sketchbook.